you're watching the free version of Silhouette Essentials. For projects and footage, head to borisfx.com for the premium download. We're going to get out of the stabilized view here, select none. I'm going to lock my layer here. I'm going to focus in on the screen left hand. So there's a little bit of foreshortening here, some rotation. It's going to be a little bit of a tricky track, but let's see what we can get. I'm going to do a mocha track here. I'm going to make a tracking shape. I'm just going to try to capture a part of this hand and some of the fingers and some of the bracelets. I'm not going to worry too much about the thumb. Go to the tracker tab, go to the mocha tracker here, and I'm just going to try with translation, scale, and rotation. The second half of the shot looks a little bit harder to track, so we'll see what happens. Okay, I can already see right now that my shape is not really staying attached to parts of the hand that I want it to, so I'm going to try again. I'm going to select my layer here. I'll go to the Node tab. Actually, the Object tab here. And we will clear the matrix. And we'll start again. I'm going to go back to our keyframe. And I'm going to see if I can have a little bit more area here to track. At times, you might not always get a perfect track, but if you can reduce some movement of the camera or the object, it's still useful. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. We'll go back and track to the beginning. If my track isn't satisfactory here, I will try another solution. I typically allow myself no more than five minutes when trying to track something. If it fails, then I just move on. Okay, let's see how that worked out. I'm going to drop a quick shape in here. Turn off my tracker shape for the moment. I'm not going to try to get the bracelets at this point. That'll be probably a separate track. So right now I'm just looking for the palm of the hand. But if the tracking works well, I could probably use it for some of the fingers as well. And let's make this a different color. First, let's close the shape. It's a little bit hard to see what's going on. Here we go. And I want to make sure that my shapes are overlapping into the other shapes where the lines sort of overlap each other. If I made the shapes that there wasn't any overlap, you could get a little bit of a divot here where the shapes come together. Okay, let's take a look. Actually, we'll make this a different color. And how about we just go to the stabilized view, layer one. Sometimes I don't label my layers until after I know the tracking is what I want. So it's not perfect, but it might be enough where we just need a few keyframes. All these little movements in the hand require some adjustments for sure. But I do think the tracking helps, and so does rotoing with the layer stabilized in the viewer. As I scrub through here, I think this will be good enough for now. Okay, the next thing I want to do is to see if we can use this tracking for some of the fingers. But first I'm going to label my layer, screen left hand, and I'm going to change the default color of the spline. So I'm going to go to Preferences, I'm going to go to Colors, and instead of black, we're going to just choose Cyan, click OK. And now every shape we make after this will be Cyan. 
So let's pick a finger here to see if our tracking will help us. I'm just going to choose this four finger here. I'm going to go to a frame where I can see most of it in frame and that it's clear. Okay, I'm going to choose this frame here and drop in a shape. Click B for B spline and start making our shape around the finger. So I'm trying to put in some detail here. And then when I get to where the finger meets the hand, I'm going to make it so it's not straight across. It's a little bit curved and also not just straight down because there really is a natural curve in between the fingers. Okay, so while I just want to point this out that you really want to make it as realistic as possible. For example, there's so many times where I see finger shapes that look like this and I'll just turn this one off temporarily and it'll just be just sort of an oblong shape with no detail. And that doesn't look good. It doesn't look like a finger and it doesn't look realistic when it's being composited. So I urge you to take the time. We'll just delete this shape and make detailed shapes as much as possible. Okay, let's see what the tracking looks like. Not quite as helpful. So I'm going to turn this shape off and we're going to try to track the finger itself. I'm going to lock this layer here. I'm going to see if I can find something on this finger that is trackable. I'm going to go out of the stabilized view and we'll just choose this upper part of the forefinger. I think having my tracking shape include that first joint in the finger will help capture more relevant tracking data. You can see that we lost visibility of our tracking shape in the viewer during the tracking process. That's okay, it won't affect the track, but if you want to keep an eye on it the whole time, which is a good idea, you can pause the track by clicking the stop button in the tracking pop-up window or press the space bar on your keyboard. Then you can reorient your viewer and resume the tracking process. And we'll track to the beginning. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to just take a quick look and we'll drop a shape inside our layer to see if this will work. I'm going to turn off the tracking shape for the moment and zoom in and make our shape. So again, it's not perfect, but I think it's doable, something I can work with to try to eliminate making too many keyframes. I'm speeding up this keyframing session for this object, but throughout I'm trying to keep the control points on or very near the same location on the outside of the finger. If I can keep that consistent, then I will need fewer keyframes and the rotor will be smoother.
Rotowing organic shapes like this is faster with tracking assist, but it still takes a bit of time. After this, I will move on to the legs. Before I move on, I'm going to do some quick tidying up in the object list. It's so important to stay organized because before you know it, you'll have lots and lots of layers and shapes.